Welcome everyone to this webinar. This is our first time doing something like this. I'm super excited uh, for tonight. We've got Spencer Sessions here and we were just talking the other night about how we officially, I guess, met online and some of our stuff popped up on Facebook for him. And I could immediately tell that Spencer had a passion for this topic because he immediately joined our email list. And to be honest, most of our email lists are mothers. Yeah, I think <laughs> generally moms are the ones that have to deal with this for the most part. So first of all, I was excited to find a dad that was super involved. Mm -hmm. and, yes. And then second of all, I could just tell that Spencer was super passionate about this topic. So we just started emailing and he shared some of his story with me and then was willing to write this great article for our site called Reality of a Virtual Reality. Just been so great and sparked some great conversation on the website with some great comments. So um, we just like to welcome everyone and Spencer, we would love for you to just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about you. Great. Yeah. So I am a father of four. So I've got, well, as of as of last week, actually, I'm a father of four. <laughs> um, our little girl decided to show up six weeks early. And so she is comfortably and really well in the NICU right now. And my wife's recovering really well. And um, things are going really good um, in family wise. So I'm really happy to be here, of course. And that's all taken care of. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I work for the university here in Pocatello, Idaho. I have worked there for roughly seven years and uh, work as a network administrator. I'm actually the senior network administrator right now. So I manage the campus's internet. So I've always been kind of a techie guy for the most part. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a techie world out there. And so it's, a, <laughs> it's good that I have this profession as well as a kind of a background within within video games, that's, it was, it's been a rough road trying to figure out this thing by myself to a large degree um, because it's kind of a, it's a, it's a new world. These last 30 years have really developed really quickly and uh, here we are. <laughs> and now we get to learn as parents how best to manage and deal with a whole new beast that has never been dealt with before. So. Yeah. Well, and I love that you have this background in IT. So you've got really the technical experience as well as just your, your personal experiences to bring to the table. So and yeah. just to let everyone know, we are recording this call, so we will be sharing it so that others can view that. Um, and we will be actually be doing a Q&A toward the end of the call. So if you have any questions, you can definitely, if you want to chat in the chat box, you can. If you have any questions, just save those toward the end and we can unmute you and you can jump on and just ask your questions. And yeah. I'm, I think we'll just have some more parents joining in as we go. Anything else you want to say before we dive into our questions, Spencer? Well, um, really, I'm, this is my first time doing an interview of this type for, for this thing in particular. Um, I've been pretty quiet about it for most of my life. I really haven't wanted to you know, it's not something you want to tell everybody, hey, I had a video game addiction and I'm <laughs> super proud to be out of it. And I want to help other people out of it now too, to a certain degree. So it's been a, um, it's just, it's a, it's been a really great experience for Andrew to reach out and said, Hey, how about you share a little bit? And I was like, I'd, I'd love to share this because there was a mom, I believe, who was having some issues with her kids. And I was like, this is my advice. She's like, well, that's really good. Would you write an article? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, actually I'm already three quarters of the way through writing one right now. And I'd love to just make this for you because I just needed that extra little push to yeah. get it out there. And, and then once it was out, there's been really great dialogue on the bottom in the comments. And I just, I, I found myself spending two hours formulating a proper answer to really give, <laughs> give it a, a, a really good push so that um, moms and dads out there can find some sort of sanity <laughs> within within this uh, digital world we're in right now, so. Yeah, and I, yeah, I wanna add to that. I felt like this was totally, here in Oregon, a lot of times people call it serendipitous, right? So whether you believe it's, you know, a higher power or it's serendipity, 
but I think Spencer and I were supposed to connect to be able to help parents because while I have my own five children that I'm trying to help with screens and different, different things like that, I really lack when it comes to video game experience. Um, my husband played video games growing up, but it was a different world. And he, it wasn't something he really got really pulled into. And this is something that a lot of parents are dealing with. So I'm just really grateful to you for stepping up to be willing to share your experience. So, um, so we'll go ahead and dive into our questions here. So Spencer, I'm just curious what age you were when you started playing video games. Um, it, uh, at a very young age, so I'm, I'm a, I grew up in the 80s, right? So I was born in 82. Um, Nintendo came out in 83. So, you know, and um, I remember traveling down to Chicago growing up to visit my cousins. I was, those are the closest cousins growing up uh, from Minnesota down to Chicago. So an eight hour drive. And they would always have like an Atari. They had like an Atari and like some other um, uh, and television. Anyway, one of those, one of those two really old ones. But then one year that I came back and they had a Nintendo and our family never had them. Right. And we, we just, it was kind of a new thing, but they were like the cool family. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and so I remember being, and every other year we would go back and forth, you know, they come to our place, we'd go to theirs. And I remember the, the distance that I would be away from it, I'd be thinking about it a lot. Right. And so I remember I was like, oh man, that was really fun. I really wanted to play that or, or to do that thing because we don't have it here. So yeah, it was a really young, probably six or seven years old is when things really kind of, I was like, this would be a cool thing. <laughs> this is a, this is a neat thing. I mean, yeah. Uh, I remember. Yeah. So. so you were playing your cousin. So then were you convincing your parents to get a Nintendo at home or what? what happened no, there? I knew it was a losing battle. I mean, my parents were like, no, that's, that's too expensive. That's too much to invest in, uh, to manage. Um, I think that we may have had something like an, like an older version, like an Atari or something like that. But again, that's uh, really early eighties, but um, yeah, that, that's when I remember when this whole thing started, I guess, to a little bit. So. Okay. So then at what point then did you move on to really start playing? So you maybe you played at first when you were six or seven, but um, when did you start playing and were there any limits as far as time or content when you were growing up? And, and I'm curious if so, if there were those limits, how did they help or hinder your gaming habits? Um, when I was around 14, my parents, bought a Nintendo 64. <laughs> that was uh, two variations after the normal Nintendo. And uh, they got it for us for Christmas. I think they just finally gave in. And uh, I remember that being a really huge peak for me. It was like, okay, let's, I'm going to jump into this. And um, yeah, so there, there, I guess there was that. I was really, I really loved computers at the time too. So we had a computer, of course, in the home. And I found ways of downloading games and playing them without <laughs> much like what's goes on right now with, with tablets, but I just figured it out with, you know, how to install a program back in that day. And um, yeah, so about 14 ish is when things really started taking off because it was in proximity. Right. So. Yeah. And you obviously you like technology, so you were savvy enough to know how to download the games and probably just get what you could get access to. Right. Yeah, and my parents didn't know anything different. They're like, oh, this is something new. Like, what, yeah. what's this all about? <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm curious then, when did video games go from being something that was just entertaining to you to something that you did habitually or that you were, when um, you were doing it like a lot? So I had friends who would play uh, multiplayer. We had multiplayer games. Um, so I know not a lot of moms would know about this, but there's a game called GoldenEye. And this is a first person shooter game, but all your friends would come over to a house and you would shoot each other. <laughs> that was like one of the first really, really popular first person. Um, yeah, because it was, it was James Bond, right? So James Bond, you wanted to be 007 agent and uh, 
Um, so I, it began with being together with friends and hanging out with them. And then it moved on to being, uh, I wanted to get better and so I could beat them. <laughs> and so that's kind of when it became habitual because I wanted to become, you know, I want to be the best, right? I want to have something to prove. Um, that's just kind of the motivation behind uh, some young teens, right? They, <laughs> they want to become the best. They want to do really good and show off and. Yeah, so there's so. almost like the competitive part that plays into it then. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. So you were like high school then? Um, 16 ish, 15, 16. Yeah. So, when you were yeah. really starting to play hard. Yep. Playing to exactly. win, right? <laughs> that's what, that's what it was. It was, yeah. I, I just had this passion to, to be the best. Right. So. Yeah. So. Okay. So when did, at what point, so you started playing in high school, at what point did you recognize that you were no longer in control? And I, and this is another thing I'd like to ask I wonder if you call it an addiction and what your thoughts are on using that word in correlation to video gaming. So that's kind of three questions there. So you can unpack that however you'd like, but yeah. Um, um <laughs> so I, my, my brother-in-law for the year 1999, uh, he, he gave me a game called Starcraft. Um, that's made by the same people who make Warcraft. I'm not sure if anybody else has heard of world of Warcraft, which is, incredibly popular um but he gave me that game in christmas for christmas i played it a lot um right right away because i want to become good at it um and the year 2000 dance like the 1999 dance it was like this huge bash and there i was playing <laughs> this video game instead of going to a dance which all my friends knew that i love going to dances they're like why isn't he here yet? So I showed up at like 9.30 when the dance started at like 8.15 or something like that, 8 o'clock. And I how wasn't... Old you, how old were you at this time? Oh, yeah. So at that point, I was like 17 or so. Okay. And so that was that was my time to have a good time. I, I love that type of thing, being really social and, and outgoing. At, but then that's when I realized that I was cutting myself off, off from my friends a little bit and and really paying attention more to video games more than was more important, right? I, I wasn't connecting with anybody anymore. It was just full on what's in it for me kind of thing. And it was, I, I remember sitting there in my chair playing the game and I was like, oh, I'll get off and just like, like one more minute, you know, like two more minutes. And I'd sit there and nine o'clock rolled around and I'm like, I've got to go. Like, people are expecting me to be there. And yeah, so that's when I realized I, I had definitely had an issue with just, I've, I've got to step away and I didn't want to, <laughs> even for something that I loved. So, so yeah. at 17, you recognize that it was sort of becoming a problem. Yeah, it was, I was like, you know, I kind of make that like, ugh, like in your mind, like I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm doing it anyway. But um, so I guess I would call it, it's hard because addiction is used so much these days that it's really difficult for us to even pinpoint what really is and what it's not. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's two things. So there's a substance addiction, right? And then there's a behavioral addiction. Right. And then within both of these, um, I almost think that video games is both, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's something that you take in. Um, it's a compulsive stuff, substance that you're taking into your, into your life. Um, and then it's creating a pathway or a new habit within your life too. So it's, yeah. um, so I, I, I don't mean to throw around the word too much, but yeah, it's a definite addiction and I wish there's a better word. You would call it an addiction. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> um, so, and that's not when things were, were bad though. So, I served a church service mission. So I, it took me about two years to kind of pull myself away from games a little bit. Um, met a girl and uh, drove up to Pocatello, which she's actually my wife right now, but she waited for me for two years while I was on this church service mission. We came back. Uh, we knew we were going to get married. So we were married five weeks later on. <laughs> really, really fast marriage. Wow. We had most of it planned before we, before we left. 
Um, I got back. I was interested in reconnecting with some of the old friendships that I had. Mm-hmm. And they were all gaming. And I wanted to show, I wanted to like connect with them, but not get into gaming. And it wound up being that I was back into the gaming mode without much um, direction. And uh, that's when things really got bad because I didn't have a direction. I had no idea what I was doing and I used it as a crutch to escape from not having an idea of how to go about the rest of my life. So, yeah. so it's kind of like you had this goal to go do this service. Mm-hmm. You did that and then you knew, okay, the next step for me is marriage and, and you yeah. did that. Yeah. And then Check. <laughs> yeah. After that you were feeling maybe a little bit lost or, Yeah. I didn't know. I was like, okay, profession. I haven't really been trained to do this. Like what, how do I get a profession? What, what's my life's career? And, uh, got to the point of where I just became really nervous and, um, had that anxiousness about me and, uh, found that gaming helped me to escape from that responsibility to a large degree. So I wouldn't have to think about, you know, as soon as an opportunity would come up, I would, like hide pretty much uh, mentally to get away from it all because it was it was so uh, it was so difficult for me to think about creating the next step in my life without really knowing how it was going to go right and that's a part of being an adult (laughs) and yeah so well and we might talk about this a a little bit more later but I know you and I talked about how that's some of the draw or the pull of screens for our kids is just feelings of feeling anxious or, you know, anxiety or depression or whatever it might be. The screen is kind of a safe place, right? I mean, it's yeah. not, but it is. It's a well, yeah. To, to your, to your mind, it, it feels, it's like a relaxing thing. Mm-hmm. You're able to kind of break away from everything. It's again, it's, it's that kind of the virtual life and you just get to live there for a while and then when you come back to reality and say okay now i'm gonna get work done and you don't have a direction you're like well back to my old virtual life i'm (laughs) that's that's way better than having to manage some sort of responsibility here so that was uh that's how i believe is happening to most of our kids right now they're they're unable to 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 find the solution amidst the anxiety that they're feeling there's not a solution for them. And that's kind of what we're here tonight for is to find this solution with them rather than for them. Right. It doesn't work to have that for them, but. uh, Right. Yeah. And I think we'll talk about this a little little bit. Great. Yeah. So you realized, I guess at what point were you, or you, you're married and you're really getting into gaming with your friends was there any moment that just helped you just really realize that you needed to break free from this or was it just kind of a gradual process? Um, I'm just curious what helped you break free from your gaming habit. So I found that I wanted to, once again, I, I wanted to have notoriety. I wanted to have something to show for my life. Right. And so I wanted to game to have that. Right. I, that I found that there were a group of friends who all knew how difficult it was for me to achieve some great thing. And so then I would hop on and when I'd show that they'd be like, wow, incredible, good, good job. And, and I found that there was this way more of a, uh, a reward within that than, than I could find out outside of that because, um, so the moment that I really realized that I needed to stop was, um, one, I was looking for exits. I actually Googled one day. I was like, how to, how to stop World of Warcraft? <laughs> like, how, how, how do you quit the game? Um, and uh, some, somebody offered a, some advice to say, well, find out how long you've played the game, and that maybe will wake you up a little bit. And so I hopped on, <laughs> hopped on my game, and um, I don't like saying this, but so I... I you hit in backslash played and then it'd tell you the time. And so you can do it with each one of your characters. And I had spent 140 days within two years on one character. 
And so that's, that's in, that's in game time. So that's not, that's not like days I've been playing total. So that's within two and a half years. So roughly like 20% of my life, at least within those two and a half years, I was, I was in that game. I didn't eat very well. Um, I actually went to the doctor about three years after I stopped and, um, and they said that I need to be put on heart medicine because I was, you know, I, I had high blood pressure. And so they wanted to put me on that. They wanted to put me on uh, some depression what? medicine as well. Was that? Sorry, so you were like 23 or how? Um, I was 26 at the time, actually. 26. And uh, so I went to the doctor at uh, almost 30. Okay. And they said, whoa, like you're, you your body is in rough shape, buddy. <laughs> and uh, so they gave me some, a prescription for like Lipitor or something like that. And I was like, I'm 30 years old. Like, like I really trashed my body there during the, those couple of years. And so um, anyway, so I, I looked at that one. There was one character for 140 days. There was another character that I had like 45 days. Uh, and so it added up to being some astronomical number, but anyway. Um, so can you do that on any video game? Can you go um, how much time you've spent or was that unique to that game? I know that there are uh, console games. You can probably do that. You can find out somehow. Um, you can probably find out if they're using a, a computer game such as, uh, like it's called Steam. Steam allows you to uh, download multiple different types of games. It's like a it's like a library of games and then you can click on each game and it'll show you how long you've played at the top left hand corner. Um, but of course that wasn't, that wasn't the thing that just kind of woke me up to a large degree and it had me looking for exit points because I really knew that I needed to change. So um, my wife was, had had it quite a few times, um, had some, had some pretty decent fights about it uh, verbally and I wasn't, I mean, it wasn't verbally abusive. It was just yeah. like, like, honey, like you're, you're, I, I'm, I'm going to work for us as a family and I'm coming back home at the end of the night and you're in the exact same spot. Like how, how are you a contributing member of our marriage? <laughs> and, wow. and it, I don't mean to laugh at that too much. I, I'm just, it's kind of a nervous laugh, right? It's like, oh, like I, I felt terrible about that. So yeah, like, uh, heart in the, or knife in the heart. Yeah. And it's like. Yeah, um, I'm working on that, honey. And so um, I had failed out most of my classes. Anyway, I don't make this too much of a of a negative story, but I mean, it definitely was. It was just, this is what can definitely happen to you if you allow this to continue on through your 20s. And you can really damage your life quite a lot. Um, and you have to take, it takes a lot of work to battle back out of it. So um I think that's a really important thing to, to bring up too, that it's not, it's not like you just quit one day. I mean, for most people that you're battling uphill to, to get back out of this mm -hmm. habit cycle, right? Right. Um, I, I promise this will be positive here in just a second. So, <laughs> so <laughs> good to know the real story. Yeah. So um, I would actually, I was signing up for classes cause I was feeling like a lazy bum so I went back to college for a while and um, I was failing out of classes because I would go to a study room that was in one of the buildings here on campus that I work at right now. <laughs> and uh, I would, and I'd hang out there um, and I failed out of multiple classes just semester after semester. Um, we borrowed money and uh, wound up with like $35,000 in debt. And that snowballed into $45,000 of debt because of interest. And uh, this last month, April, we actually paid that off 100%. And so we are now, we're actually 100% debt free right now. And it feels amazing. So, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, it, it turned around because my wife loved me. She saw something in me that um, she's like, I, I know that you are better than this. I know that you have so much more potential and for you to to go on this path i'm i'm waiting for you to wake up a little bit you know but wow. i'm gonna love you through it and uh and that was amazing as well as someone showed some interest in me and said you know i see something in you spencer i think that you've got something um i'm gonna give you a responsibility to watch over about 15 
men who are my age and I'd like you to lead them um, in a, in a religious, you know, uh, manner since I had just been serving a mission and such uh, a few years earlier. And so he, he just gave me a chance and I really dove into that as well. And my, my focus started to be pulled away from what's in it for me into how can I possibly help other people? And I found that very rewarding. It was much more rewarding than um, the non-existent rewards that kind of, <laughs> that really came of, of gaming. So well, a couple of things I love about that story that you mentioned is one that you had someone that was loving you and supporting you through this. I think mm. that's really important for us to remember as, you know, parents or spouses or whatever the case may be. I think that's incredible, the support that your wife gave you. And then second of all, I think that mentioning a responsibility, right? So you were you had someone that believed in you. And also they gave you some kind of responsibility outside of gaming. And then you started to kind of maybe have a taste of success or, or like you said, just um, feeling a sense of accomplishment or that you were actually helping someone. So mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. And, and it's really, I mean, if, if there's another young man out there or someone who's, you know, at, wherever you're at within this process, um, you have to find your exit points, right? You have to find where, where you can possibly leave the cycle that you're currently got yourself in. Uh, and it's difficult to see that you're in a cycle. <laughs> it just seems like you're just having fun and having a good time. Right. Um, but uh, you can almost relate it to like right now. So game of Thrones just ended on Sunday. Let's not find another, <laughs> another series that we can pick up on and and run with right let's i mean this this is a great point to kind of say okay that was a great series i'm on for something i'm on to something next in my life what what else can i do with the time that and i'm not saying you can't have a hobby i'm just saying you know there there are times where we can find um a, a, find time to kind of grow up a little bit more you know and and yeah. realize that that's that's there's a fulfilling part in that so and I love that you mentioned that. I mean, I think those exit points appear and that sometimes we're ready for them and sometimes we're not. And I love what you said in the article that really it takes courage to, you know, recognize and then take those exit points. Yeah, you're gone now. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Let's just leave it. Oh, oh shoot. What just happened? <laughs> Hi, just go ahead and mute yourself, my love. That's actually my wife. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Okay, I think she's muted. Are you muted, Spencer? Sorry. Okay, Spencer. Are you back? I'm back. Yeah. That was my that was my that was actually my wife. She wanted to join in my little kid crying in the background. So, hey. That's life right now. Things are good. <laughs> right. It's real life, right? I think yeah. everyone on this call can relate. See, she's, um, she's still supporting me. It's we're awesome. doing good. Let's see. <laughs> so sweet. So the next question I had is, I'm curious, why do you think so many young men are drawn to playing video games? Um, it, it gives them a sense of purpose, right? I mean, there's a real direct correlation um, out there, there, there are companies who, who, I mean, it's, it's a $135 billion industry right now, right? That's, that's as much as Google makes in one year. And uh, for them, it's, it's a big business they, they, they hire neuroscientists to figure out how to get their, you know, to hook, a, hook somebody and how to keep them there and kind of perpetuate them staying within this game and making it a massive profit. And they're really not that interested in, <laughs> you know, in, in creating something that is absolutely beneficial for this next generation. They, they're in it for the money. And, and I don't mean to call them like bad, but yeah, they're, they're really out there to, to look at the qualities of young men, right? So you're learning how to become self-sufficient. You're learning how to create and build your, your new life, right? 
And so they're going to mimic that and create ways to make that really, you know, ideal. So uh, ways to connect with your friends, right? So Fortnite, why that was so special or why it is so special um, is because you're, you're creating a, a cartoon like game that is new and exciting and that can tailor to a widespread of, of individuals. Um, it became wild. It was like wildfire. I think, I mean, it took off. Right. And, and it's because they found the right combination of what is needed to, to really, you know, gather in as many as they possibly could. Um, so again, yeah. So there are like challenges, there are, there are rewards, um, set up and you don't have to think about it. Right. I mean, as I was playing world of Warcraft, there's always a next quest. There's always something new to develop or create or build that uh, mimicked success in, in real life, you know? Um, and they're always evolving that it's, it's not going to be the same today. It's not going to be, you know, there as society changes, so will the games and what rewards us as a society. So, so I wouldn't just say, you know, these are just the answers. There's definitely more to this. So yeah, we'll have to discover that when that comes up. Right. Yeah. And like you said, they're, they really are, they're smart. They're tactical about how they're drawing, you know, young people in. And I just, I find it fascinating how young men are so much more drawn to this generally than, than girls are. And I guess I'm just trying to figure that out as it, it is that sense of accomplishment or kind of the competitive side that seems to be more something that guys like. I don't know. What do you yeah, think? I think it's, te- I mean, testosterone in, in general, we just, we like to lead. We like to, I mean, the last hundred years, <laughs> we were the leaders for, for the most part. We never had video games or any sort of the thing the like. And it's like the last 30 years, this has just come on. And now they've really, you know, just, just led us down a certain path. And they've become very successful at it because they've learned what triggers us. So, um, yeah, yeah if, if you can play into it. I mean, I can't tell you how many different games I've played that. I mean, I really couldn't. <laughs> um, how many games that just that is tailored to that need to, to be a decision maker and, and learn it and become something. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to add in another question here. How, and maybe you can address this later if you need time to think about it, but how do you think that we could help young men step into those roles in different ways and be able to fulfill those needs by not, always using video games or screens to do that do you yeah no that's 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 a great question because um it's really just giving them responsibility with with my boys when i'm working with them out in the yard i give them a full-on task and say well i can't do that dad i don't know how to do that yet and it's like figure it out and they're like well i can't do it you know as a seven-year-old kid and i'm trying to (laughs) tell them how to take the garbage out Right. And it's too heavy for him. And I'm saying, well, figure it out. How do you get it up in there? You know? And uh, there's, uh, I've, I've heard of like helicopter parents, you know, they, they kind of hover, but there's also lawnmower parents. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, you're, way, right? either, yeah, you're, you're clearing the way from a hundred percent. So you don't give them an opportunity to grow or to face challenge or difficulty or, something that they're buttoned up against that they need to figure out by themselves. And as we're giving them that opportunity at a very young age, even um, that gives them a sense of responsibility and uh, self-sufficiency, which is really needed. Yeah. So. I love that. That's such a good answer. Okay. So my next question is why, Oh no. If families choose to allow video games in their homes, what advice would you give them? So let's say a video game or a family sat down and they've decided that they want to allow video games. What advice would you give them? This, you're opening up a, a large box here, right? <laughs> so, and, I, and I'll just give and, you. And, and I'll try to, yeah, yeah. So like if you, so for example, my family, so I have four girls and one boy. Mm-hmm. My boy is, will turn eight this summer. So he's still really young. And 
when you're in a house full of girls, you're really influenced by that. So mm -hmm. he hasn't really seen any like an older brother modeling a lot of, you know, playing video games or rough play or any of those kinds of things. So, so far we've been able to really just avoid the video mm -hmm. games. Well, like I said, my husband is not totally anti. My, my husband works as a software engineer now. He, he writes code. He's into that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So he's not totally against it, but he can also see the dangers and also just the fact that the games now are so different than they were when he played and they're much more addicting um, and they're never ending, right? So yeah. he, he told me he would save his money. He'd save like $70, go to the computer store, buy a video game, you know, or whatever, and then yeah. play it. And then you get tired and go dirt biking or go do something else. But now our kids have this 24 access so I feel like it's, it's a different world it's different technology so if let's say in the future my son really really wants to play video games and i'm always probably going to lean toward no yeah <laughs> um and so i have to cross that bridge when i get there but if if i were to say yes at all what advice would you give me right um for this I, I think that coming to a definition of what a game is these days is really necessary because um, they're really mixing in um, like good educational quality games that are really healthy to, to learn and to grow. Mm -hmm. But then they've also got game they're also on the, on the same exact device, you know, so it's, it's never, it's not like, locational anymore it's not just limited to one device it's limited to a full-on uh suite of things you possibly could choose from so anyway so the idea it would be to have us um set a definition with our families so you sit down as husband and wife um or your your spouse or by yourself or maybe even counsel with a friend and you say you know what is what is considered a snack and what's considered a treat right and some people might be like it's pretty much the same thing, Spencer, but, but in our home, a snack, <laughs> yeah, no, they have, yeah, some, some people, I don't know. Um, but, um, so for a snack, it's something that's healthy. It's something that it actually gives your body something that is of benefit and use, but a treat, of course, it's going to be something that's going to be a short term burst of satisfaction that really should only be used in moderation. Right. Sure. And so the children need to understand how to figure that out a little bit right oh okay so this game does this for me and this one it's you know it's got these qualities about it and so it, they be they're the ones that become uh learn how to moderate themselves to a certain degree now it's difficult for them at a very young age but you start hitting the, the younger teens and they had better know by that time of what really is a snack and what's a treat um so um, other advice, this, this book right here will, let me see if I can, yeah, so, I that yeah. Book. yeah, you own this book. Yeah. yeah. So, so what I would say, so this is seven habits of highly effective families within yeah. this, there are the seven habits that, um, Stephen Covey has mentioned in his, in his normal, um, in his original writing of this. Now it's kind of thick. It looks thick. It looks intimidating. You don't need to go through the full thing and, and make it. But what I would simply say is each week you have a little family council and you go through each one of these. Um, you just, you lay it out and say, Hey, let's, let's focus on being proactive. What's it mean to be proactive? And you kind of go into that. And, and if you set the principles first, your children will then be able to govern themselves. And that's really what our job obviously as parents is to set the principles and understand the definitions of what things mean so that they can, yeah. Because, you know, when I have my cell phone, whenever I'm 18 years old, I've got to know, <laughs> I've, I've got to know what's uh, making me check out of life and what's actually helping me check in to, to myself. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that's ex exactly what we are trying to do in our home and that I share a better screen time because exactly. for so long, I felt like we had so much control over our kids when they were little. And then all of a sudden you have a teenager and you realize, you know, I need to teach my kids these skills because technology is here, but I just need to do it when the time is right. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's, um, I mean, we teach them all along, but mm 
but then I feel like we start to give them a little bit more freedom as they get older. So they do have this power of discernment, you know, to be able to tell between the snack and the treat. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're here to kind of go coach them and guide them through that. So which, which is why I've been supporting you from the very beginning. I'm like, yeah, you got, you got exactly like whenever you posted this picture of, you know, how to step through, yeah. um, you, you've got to start them at the right proper um, level that they are acting to a certain degree, right? If, yeah. if you've got a 16 year old who needs a flip phone, maybe you should actually, I mean, maybe you should start it at step number two in your little process here and you're giving them one, but sorry, you don't have access to all these social media and everything else. That's, you know, you've got to, and, and one more thing that I mentioned is that um, we've, we've got to make the excess less accessible. And so there's, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot out there that you can, you can dive into. Um, but okay. again, yeah, so explain excess. Like what, what so so what whatever is unnecessary for their development, right? I mean, there there's so much out there that they can dive into. Lot. Huh? Which yeah. Is a lot. yeah. Yeah, and and there's but I also think that this is one of the greatest generations that has ever been here on earth, simply because we're given the responsibility to learn how to use all of the information in the world. I mean, we have it. We we're we're able to we have access to it, and yet we need to learn how to become indistractable um, to a sense, right? It's not, it's not completely possible, but our job is to learn how to become indistractable and focus on what our goal is and intention is. And that's why I like to have, you know, Stephen Covey's book as a, as a great reference to, you know, let's begin with the end in mind here. Let's, you know, <laughs> a lot of those great principles that, I, that they'll eventually get, so. Yes, I love that. Never read that book. I hadn't thought about applying it to in this situation. So we're gonna have to talk about that more because that's great. I love that. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you or your kids play video games now? I'm curious. And and if the answer is no, well, I mean, will you when they're older? What what so what's life like now, Spencer? <laughs> right, perfect. Uh in 2017 I bought tablets on Amazon for Christmas since I felt like I knew better. I knew how to manage, you know, uh, by, by day I was, uh, I know how to manage a firewall, you know, within a large enterprise campus. And so I know how to block hackers out and I know how to do all sorts of great technical tricks. Um, so, I, so I bought them and I was like, you know what, I'm confident. I know how to limit these things and make them really work. Um, I bought a Disney Circle. Okay. Well, these little boxes that help me manage uh, their screen time. Um, but what it came down to at their ages, they were, they were two, two and five at the time. And it just became too much as a parent, <laughs> like yeah. trying to allow them into it. They, they saw it all the time. They wanted access to it. And I was like, oh, you guys like, there's no amount of chores you can do right now to have this because we will, or it's only one hour a day. Like that's what we initially had it. Right. Uh -huh. But we've scaled it back completely. We've actually taken them away a hundred percent. They were that's rowdy. They were, yeah, it was, <laughs> it, it, it was a, it was a trial that I, I tried it out and I failed. Um, being that, sometimes that's how it is with parenting. And I feel like, especially with this, so many parents that I've talked to who are just five years ahead of me, they're like, oh, don't ask me about this. My kids are ruined already, yeah. you know? And, it, and so <laughs> you feel like that, that's rough, but. Stuff, but we have to just, you know, we, you don't know what you don't know. And sometimes yeah. we just, that's how it was with the smartphone. We gave our middle schooler the smartphone and I realized that was, it was too much too soon. Right. And, um, you know, just one note on like the interactive screens. I actually was able to go listen to Dr. Dimitri Christakis. He spoke just 20 minutes from me and which was amazing because he's like the director of the Seattle Children's um, Pediatric Unit, the hospital there. Okay. Every book I've read on screen time, he is in that book. Um, but he really studies like the younger, younger kids and 
he talks a lot about the difference between the interactive screen time and passive. And um, the interactive screens actually just increase a lot of the dopamine uh, much more than just even like watching TV, which sometimes we think we're better off because, you know, on the iPad or whatever, it's more educational, but it's actually just that much more addicting. And so we did the same thing we because we had an iPad. And with our older kids, we never had one, right? So because it didn't exist. And then with my younger one, we had gotten one for the older kids to use sometimes. And I noticed when she used it that she really had a hard time giving it up. And I started reading more and, and just realized, yeah, this isn't for her. And we just yeah. have an iPad, but I don't give it to my preschooler ever. So it, it's difficult because we need to have them help. We need to help them to, of course, utilize this and become again, a fully functioning member of society who's contributing and, and, and everyone's going to have screens. That's just how it goes. Like, and, uh, you know, I have, I have a family friend, uh, and, uh, their, their family's decided to eat super healthy. Like, <laughs> like we live in Idaho and they travel 30, 30 miles, I believe to get the proper milk for their family. So it's like, they're, yeah. They're like that, and that's great. But then, whenever their child comes over to our house and we have candy out, it's like a full-on, like a ravenous wolf. Like, give give me the candy. So it's like I we've we've got to definitely learn how to find this great balance between the two, and introduce them at a young age to say, here's some principles. This is how we're using it, um, and and uh, becoming the master of these phones instead of the slave like you have within your great, you know, great infographic there. So that's yeah. really good stuff. So. Totally. Okay, so you feel like you will let your kids play video games at some point then? Yep, definitely. Actually, I, I, I definitely would allow them to, a uh, few years even before that, I bought a Wii U and thought it was, you know, it's an innocent, it's a wonderful console, it's a family console we can play together. But again, that became too much and that was taken away and they've asked for it multiple times. And I've said, if you guys can read every day for 15 minutes for a full month, then you guys can have it back and we can make that a part of our Saturday routine where you guys can have your tablets for one hour. And so it's our, our current rule is tablets for one hour after chores on Saturdays. And um, we're picking the games. Obviously, we're very aware of that. And then... Um, and then if we're on long road trips, we allow them to bring those with them. Um, so it's just a, you know, they get to use it, you know, sparingly <laughs> for, the, for the time being. They, they get their fix, but they're doing good. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. So this is my last question. And then I'll just let you fill in with whatever you would like. And then we'll turn it over to any of the participants if they want to ask any questions. Great. So uh, what would you tell a concerned parent with a child or teen that spends many hours playing video games? What would you tell that parent if they they're, know that there's a problem in their home? It could, and it could even be a spouse. It could be a spouse or, or a child or teen. Yeah, I think the, the question should be, I mean, your great question was, was wonderful, but the question that we should ask ourselves about that individual is, what's this doing for them, right? I mean, we're here to, of course, discover what it's doing to them, right? We, we understand that there's major ramifications. There's, there's different, this is, this is chemically creating an imbalance in a lot of indi people, individuals. Um, but why are they playing, right? And if, and I'm a big follower of Simon Sinek. He's a, yeah. Yeah. he's, He's the big, he's the big guru. He's had a massive video that blew up saying, you know, look what cell phones are doing to our, you know, yes. but he's also the author of the book, Start With Why. And yeah. I, I, I love that idea. Why are people, why are people, you know, so magnetized towards this thing? Like, why is this creating such a buzz in their life? And, um, and it's filling a void. So what I'd like to show um, I've been thinking about how I would help because you, we meant, we talked on Tuesday. You said, you know, think of a 16 year old son who's, who's having a difficult time and I was thinking about him. So I hope that people can see this, but I'm going to share my screen 
Um, and I want to show you guys something that I've been mulling over of, of a solution, right? Of how do you, how do you help them? So um, let me share it right here. Can you guys, oh, you can see that now, right? Yeah. So, so right now, um, let me just kind of open up this thing so you can see a little better here. Um, so right now we'll start in this top left-hand corner. And I'll put this little zoom right here to kind of block up this other side. So, so right now, this is what's happening to your kid. You have, you have a habit that they're currently have, right? They've, they've created a, a mental pathway in their mind that this is how they're going to deal with this current addiction, right? Whenever I feel anxious, um, I am going to turn to video games, right? And um, so that's, that's number one. Like we understand that there's a habit there. But then there's also, they have anxiety of how are they going to solve this problem, right? How am I going to possibly get out of video game at, you know, playing games? Why is mom even, or daddy even asking me to get out of this thing? They're, are they just going to pull this away from me? Or am I just never going to play this ever again? And they're just going to be, you know, the, the rulers of the home or something like that. And so they're feeling anxious. Um, but it's also you can take these two very same things and apply it to us as parents, right? So what habits do we currently have within our home that are not allowing us to change? So what things have we allowed within our home? And this is of course for the mom, mom and the dad to talk to or, or single parent, however your situation may be. And then you're also anxious. You, you're looking for a solution, right? Um, and that's of course why we're here today. So then let's, that's, that's kind of the negative portion of this. Um, that's what's happening to us, right? For whatever reason, I can see like half of the slide now, and then I'm seeing the Zoom thing. Yeah, exactly. I was, I was covering up the right-hand side of the ah, screen. Is that on purpose? Okay. Got it. Yep. Sure. So, yeah, because well, I, I guess I could do the whole thing, right? Um, but then on, on the other side, there's this... We're, we're being pushed into a situation, right? We want to make this new behavior change within our home. And we're looking for, um, sorry, the push of the situation, right? The situation is, and if we can very clearly define what's happening within the situation, we can very clearly, you know, find some sort of solution. That's what we're hoping for. Um, and, and so, yeah, so it's, We've got this kind of push-pull relationship. We we understand that the uh, that habits are, are are formed and created, but we just need to create new pathways, I guess, within within um, within our homes, right? And so I don't mean to get too too far out there, but um, we we've, we've got to understand why this habit is really being perpetuated, right? Why, why is why is this? so important to them and i think that as parents it's our job to find out why that is and so what i would give as advice if they're playing multiple hours a day if they're really struggling to find some sort of uh it really is kind of peace in their life because <laughs> they're finding this as some sort of it's, it's escapism right you're escaping from the from reality in order to be somewhere else um uh, so you have to kind of judge how, how bad this is, right? If, if they're, if they're doing fine, if this is just something that fun that they do for maybe a few hours, um, a week, then, then there's one thing. But if you're realizing that they're falling into a serious pattern of, of addiction, you've got to really understand why this is They're They're pulling their life out of perspective and focusing on this thing. Right. So, um, what if we kind of know that it is just anxiety or or just a way to we know that's just a way to escape how as parents might we intervene to help them right yeah exactly so if they're <laughs> um really you'll you'll know how best to handle this if if you have an open conversation with them to, to a large degree, right? It, you, you have to find a solution with them. It's never going to be a find a, a, find a solution for them unless they're 
uh, unless they're very, very young and they just don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. I could, if you, if you take that choice away from them now, they're going to find that choice later on in their life. And, and that's a very hard lesson that, uh, that I learned actually, um, in, you know, in time past as well. If, if you're going to pull this thing away from me, I'm, it's not my decision then. Right. And so counseling together as a family is a, is an attribute that is severely lacking in society right now. Can you have a, an open dialogue an easygoing, just, you know, can we have family time at the, at the dinner table? Can we just be together as a family <laughs> and, and not have any sort of distractions? Can we, can we just decide that that's going to be our, our status quo? You know, that's how things run. Um, but uh, I think it also has to do with our example as well, right? I mean, this is the one that I, we don't like to hear, but if they see us with our phones at the dinner table, they can say, well, hey, you know, that's, it's, it's acceptable to you. So how is this a double standard? I, I don't, you know, this is not how life works, you know? <laughs> and so setting the example, of course, is, is a massive one. Um, and it's not just, you know, we play games in a different way. We watch sitcoms or shows or things that we're really interested in. And they see it, well, since they're playing, or, you know, they're having their time. Well, uh, this is how I relax, you know? Yeah. And so you need to define what entertainment really means to you and your family and, and then to stick to some sort of plan as because uh, the definition of an entertainment has been completely um, hijacked in the last 30 years. I mean, we've, if you, uh, if you, if you have Netflix and you like to watch certain shows, I would have you look at uh, the eighties, nineties and two thousands. It's a documentary on each one of those and it's showing how the entertainment series or how the entertainment industry has affected society. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's very, it's very, it's, it's super entertaining to me because I'm like, yeah, that's, that's kind of how my life has always been. There's always been, you know, especially if you're a middle-aged parent right now, yeah. we've just become accustomed to entertain us, you know? Right. So. Yeah. And I, I definitely agree with your statement to just model. I always, I always use the hashtag be the change you want to see. And mm -hmm. I just didn't really take that to heart until I had a teenager. And, um, and so when I ever young parents talk to me and they're like, what can I do now? My kids are too young to really sit down and have a full on, you know, family council or family meeting to make a family tech plan. And I just tell them, you just model, 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 model what you want to see, because I wish I would have caught on to that earlier. And one of the changes that we made was that we don't take screens into the bedrooms or the bathrooms. Mm. And, um, you know, I always was had my laptop and because I've worked for other people for the past few years. So it wasn't uncommon for me to be in my bedroom at 11 o'clock at night on my laptop, getting stuff done. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of reasons to avoid that scenario, right? But when I finally realized I needed to change, change that behavior, um, you know, I, didn't, I knew I didn't want my kids to be taking screens into the bedrooms for a lot of reasons. But I realized that, you know, we're protecting our sleep and we're also protecting our relationships when we reserve the bedrooms, you know, for that, re for replenishing and for relationships. and even for siblings, when they share a room, then a screen doesn't come in the middle of that. And, you know, yeah. Siblings have the best conversations late at night sometimes. And so, you know, things, it's just screens can get in the middle of that. So, you know, one thing that I would suggest, uh, one thing that I've instituted in my family is I take out, uh, well, my oldest as of right now, since my two, two are a little bit younger, I guess three now, but yeah, um, my oldest every month I take him out for breakfast on one Saturday out of the month. And we just have that one-on-one -on -one time. Um, the phone doesn't come out, but, and it's not an opportunity to teach him a principle. It's just for us just to be together. I mean, it's, and, and I can't, I can't um, stress that enough that, that don't use those as, as teaching opportunities, just get to know them and let them know that you are absolutely really care about what they're currently experiencing, what they're going through. And 
Um, you know, if you do bring a phone along, take a picture of the situation so that you have a memory of you guys visiting, you know, 50 different places by the time you're, <laughs> you know, by, by the time they're out of the house and whenever they say, well, we never, we never hung out. We never did <laughs> fun stuff together. You know, you'd be like, I've got these 50 pictures. Like we definitely, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just being funny there, but, but yeah. No, I agree with that. That's something that we've always tried to do in our family is to do one-on-one -on -one dates. And my husband and I will trade off with the kids and yeah, I love it. I love having that. And I, even, I took my younger one. I get a lot of time with her because she's still home with me, but I took her to the park the other day and I deliberately left my phone at home which I haven't done for a really long time. We went to the park and it was great because I just, I was not even, you know, I wasn't even pulling out the phone to take a picture of her. I just was making eye contact. And so I think those decisions, whether, you know, it's to take your kid out to breakfast on Saturday morning or to go to the park without your phone. I think th those moments really add up. So I love that advice. Great. Okay. So should we turn it over to questions now? All right. Uh, bring, bring it on. <laughs> so I'm just going to put in the chat here. Um, can you guys, do you guys have a raise hand function? Do you have that Spencer or raise your hand? Uh, I believe. Yeah. In the bottom right hand corner on. Um, yeah. Uh, there we go. We got. Yeah. Okay. So Christina. now I just have to figure out how to. Unmute her. Okay, Christina, I'm going to unmute you and you're up. Oh. Okay, Oops. go ahead. <laughs> Do you have a question, Chris Christina? You have a question? Oops. Um... We can see your picture, which is totally fine. If you want us to see your video, you can turn on your video. Or I can actually probably turn it on too for you. Do you I want us to see you? Oops. Let's see. We can hear you. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I'm just trying to figure this out. I, I don't have a question yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can move on. Somebody else. I'm sorry. You said raise hand, and so I was testing it out. My, my <laughs> awesome. Got it. We'll mute you if you have a okay. question. Okay. Yes, you can. Yes, I'm just listening. Very good. Okay. Anybody else have a question for Spencer? You can just raise your hand here. We would love to hear from you because we know parents. And don't feel bad if I have to restate something, uh, whether in the article or. Otherwise, I'm happy to re -go, th go through that. Um, so, And we don't have to turn on the video if you don't want us to see you. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's late a lot of different places right now. People are in their pajamas. And <laughs> right, totally. So we don't have to see you. You can just, you can just turn on your audio. I mean, even my wife could even chime in and ask me a question, right? <laughs> on the call <laughs> let's see your, your wife's Alyssa Sorry. yep Alisa, uh, Alisa yep mm -hmm. okay Alisa yep. Yep. okay don't be shy parents you have any questions for Spencer now is your chance it's kind of funny is whenever my wife and I were married the person who was marrying us um, read her name as Elisa <laughs> so I'm married to I'm married to an Elisa. That's just how it's <laughs> funny. So I um I'd hope that yeah if if anyone feels like they maybe have a teenager who's I I can go into more detail as far as um what I might suggest. Um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. So well, let's, yeah. we'll give Spencer the, some more time to just share a few more thoughts. So you guys okay. can be thinking if you have questions and then just raise your hand at any time. And then when he's done, we'll, we'll turn it over to you. Okay. Um, so like I was talk, talking about like earlier, so when our 
um, when we're not so much focused on, you know, what they're doing, but more so why they're doing it, it, it really pulls a new question out of you as, as a, as a parent. I mean, you're, you're looking at this as a, you're trying to almost pick this thing apart and, and uh, reverse engineer of how they're doing this, of, of why they're why they're acting out the way that they are, um, and many times they cannot help you <laughs> when they're in the middle of it, and so it takes a lot of love and patience on your part to understand how they're how they're feeling and and help them through the emotion. Because when you're tunnel vision into this thing, um, it's very difficult for you or me or whoever it is who's addicted to this to be able to express themselves because everything's going on up here. It's never made it down this way. <laughs> it's never made it into their voice to be able to express what it is that they're feeling. And, uh, and so it takes a lot of patience on the parents' part to realize that that they are going to struggle to communicate with you um, because yeah, 99% of the time they're, everything's up here. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, One question I, I guess I'm thinking of is how do we decide what's the candy and or the treat and what the snack is like? Mm -hmm. I mean, because obviously in every home that's probably going to be different. Right. Um, but like for me, shooter games make me really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Uncomfortable. And they should, yeah. Um, but they don't make Tyler quite as uncomfortable. But I've real, I've recognized that they don't affect him in the same way they affect me. Right. So I mean, I think they affect everyone personally, but I think they affect some people. Yeah, I was actually just talking to a good friend of mine. Um, his this is some guy out after the mission, right? And this was another guy and he continued to play. Um, and he just started going back to college this last year uh -huh. and trying to get his life turned around and pulling things out. Um, and he wrote a paper on this very same thing. And it was do shooter games make people violent, right? That was his proposal of the whole thing. And he did a bunch of in-depth research and he found that homes that are do not have a father figure had a higher likelihood of acting out and of violence if they're playing those things right hmm. and 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 it's just it's just a it's just a real thing that having a strong having strong parents within the home is a is a great benefit i mean you can't you can't go around this fact and so anyway if, if that's not the case, you can, um, if there's not a strong father figure, I'd actually recommend, and if for those men who are out there or, or young men out there who are looking for a good resource of, of how to channel your um, desires of man, I would have you look up Order of Man. This is a guy by the name of Ryan Mickler, and he has been an incredible resource to me. Um, I've had a very kind and loving father throughout the years he's been really great okay. um but for me i needed somebody who is who would help me to tutor me how to become you know my own you know to to make it to make me my own so i just wanted to throw that quick plug in there not that he's <laughs> any affiliation but i i joined his facebook group and there's about 100 people there there's now oop, oh. there's oh you're sharing someone's sharing uh, but uh there was uh, around What's that? I, I'm not sharing. <laughs> I'll have to figure out how do we, let's see, anybody, oh, KKJ, whoever that is. Oh, okay. We don't want to see your screen. I'm not sure how to fix that. <laughs> uh, I think. Let's see. I, I think you're the uh, owner. So at the very, very top of your screen, you can see uh kkj screen maybe anyway um so the so idea oh. yeah at the very top of your screen kkj you can hit uh stop sharing um but I, as as a 
I think that the, he's a really great resource because he teaches you how to really um, just manage your emotions as a man to a large degree. He's got a podcast of, of now 10 million downloads and I just, just this little, little startup. And so again, if you need, if there's not a father figure in your life, if you are struggling to kind of figure out how best to kind of lead your own life as a, as a young man, I would use that as a great resource. He's, he's a fan, fantastic, phenomenal person with just a really good, really great personality and, and really wants to help men. So, so this is a book or a podcast? Or it's, a pod, it's a podcast. And he also just wrote a book recently called Sovereignty. So okay. I'm just, I'm just, I'm putting that out there because I really have, I, I really believe that that would help a lot of men out there or young men. So awesome. thank you. Great, yeah, great resource. Um, I guess another thought, how would, how would a parent who maybe has made some boundaries with their kids, how do they still be like the fun, nice parent? <laughs> well, let's say, let's say my son's like, I'm, we've really limited screen time because of the problem. Mm -hmm. And my son's like going to the library. And instead of, you know, checking out books, he's going to use the screen because he's not happy with the limits that we're, that we have at home. Or maybe he's going to someone else's house to play video games because there's a certain video game we're not allowing. Um, you know, how would you, what would you recommend to that parent? Yeah, I mean... Well, we all try to be the cool parent, right? We, we want to be the cool parent. We actually want to make our home the place where we want our kid to invite their friends over to our house, right? That's kind of the goal. I think it's everyone's goal, right? So that we have our own nice little boundary that we've set that mm -hmm. our kids, we know. Yeah, anyway. Um, I think this is almost, I mean, you're you're trying to teach your kids principles once again and have them lead themselves. And I think that as long as they're feeling true, genuine care and concern for them, they're, they're going to figure it out. Um, this is actually pretty, I, I think this is just with, with all humans. And I, I just want to relate this real quick. So this morning I went to the NICU with my little baby girl who is about 10 days old. And, and they said, you know, it takes some time for the baby to figure out how to eat. And so then you'll feed them with the bottle and then they have to put it through the, you know, but through the uh, like a feeding. feeding tube, exactly feeding tubes. And so then, but eventually as they kind of get it, just, they just kind of, it just clicks one day, you know, and it takes some time. And I think that's exactly what it's going to be like for our kids. We've just got to be patient with them and and continually find ways to introduce good wholesome habits and i think that over time as we're loving them and, and showing them the way once it, it's just it's just going to click you know and that's what it took for me it, it took me to to finally put it all together and be like oh i see what i'm doing to my life like it it i had to like see it finally and it took me a while to, of doing good wholesome things to finally make it all mesh and, and make something great so it took a while really i mean it, it, it did your, your service mission during part of that but really like a decade right like a full-on like a full-on decade and <laughs> that's a terrible answer to give to some parents but but <laughs> uh, but of course i didn't have any sort of tutoring or or teaching um no guide guidelines or limits um, this was all very, very new. And so for you guys to be on here tonight, to learn these things right now, you're, you're starting up here, you know, <laughs> you're, you're on a new level that yeah. I hope you'd be able to share with other parents. Um, because yeah, this, this, it's very valuable information. I, I, very timely, I, I suppose, but, uh, um, so there's a question from Becky and she says, I know people shy away from answering this. But I'm trying to figure out if my son is addicted or not. How many video games hours per week is considered an addiction? That's a great question. So we kind of, I don't know if it's an hourly thing. I suppose, I mean, I, I, I suppose you can kind of figure that out. But um, I would say that I would go through this master slave um, questionnaire to a large degree 
do you think that would be helpful, Andrea, to kind of to, to figure out whether or not they are, and it, it looks like this, mm-hmm. and this is from Better Screen Time, and so I would have her, have, have you fill that out for them, or uh, yeah, I, I'm, probably have them fill that out. I don't know how, how comfortable they would be for that, right? But right. I think yeah, that'd be. And I think one of the things that I always read is just kind of paying attention to like, are they, so here's one thing, like you mentioned that there was that night when you chose to play, you were playing video games rather than going to the dance, which is something you really love. I think that's a huge indicator when someone is letting go of of something that they love to do in place, you know, and and, then instead they're playing video games. So they're replacing it. I think that is, you know, from what I've read, a a sign of it. Yeah, so the, I, the definition of addiction is a compulsive substance use despite harmful consequences. So, I mean, they're, they realize that they're possibly not, <laughs> it probably isn't a good idea, but I'm definitely going to do it anyway. Whether they admit it or not, they're, they're choosing that over something that, um, that they know that they probably should be, you know. Yeah, um, is it, like, is it affecting sleep? I think that's mm-hmm. really important, right? So mm-hmm. I'm guessing you lost some sleep, Spencer, playing video games. Oh, <laughs> wake up early in the morning and go to bed late at night. Yeah. Yeah, so I was, think that's uh, a huge indicator, right? They're losing yeah. sleep, health. Like a, a, a loss of appetite. Yep, yeah. you're you're really. willing to forego normal <laughs> processes in the body in order to, to to give it up. I mean, you're giving it up, so... Yes, like, you know, getting up to use the bathroom and drinking water and then just how well are they interacting with people? Like, um, are they wanting to isolate themselves a lot? I think that's a big indicator. And that could be with social media. You know, it could be with anything, right? Pornography, any of these things. I think just based on what I've read and what I've seen is when people are really isolating themselves a lot, that's an indication of a problem. And I would, um, I would really look up the definition escapism. That's actually starting to be on the rise as far as a terminology. You're, you're escaping from your reality in order to live something else. So yeah, if, if it classifies under that word, under that definition, that'd be great. There's another question from, from Kathy. So Kathy KJ, um, what about when kids' whole social life seems to be tied up in playing Fortnite with their friends? So that's a definite hook that is created by, by these companies. They realized, Hey, we've, we've got to create a social aspect of this so that people, so that their parents can somehow say, well, they have friends, you know, (laughs) and, and, um, and so their, their friends really are not their friends though. Right. When a friendship is based upon having a face to face conversation and, and this is good. Like these type of situations, we can see each other's faces. We're talking directly to one another, but it's an indirect channel. It's a virtual channel when you're not really communicating. It's, it's a common bond. It's a common goal, but you're not really creating a friend there. And that was really hard for me because when I was playing, there was a guild that I was a part of, and I was a very important member of that team. And, um, People knew me. I knew them. I knew about their families. I had people who lived in, in England who were on military, you know, and so I, I made these great friendships, so to speak, but they weren't truly friendships, like <laughs> organic, true friendships. And so for, for us to be able to help them to, to create that in this day and age is, is definitely a challenge, but we provide opportunities in, in our home to make that a thing, right? If you're in our home, we're going to make, uh, we're going to create opportunities for you guys to grow together as friends in the real world. And, and to get to that point, it may seem difficult because they are that far along already. They're, they're already at, you know, step nine of 10 of addictions. You have to walk them back and, and, uh, help them to realize, you know, this is a, um, this is a definite need for us in our family and for you in your future to 
you know, we've, we've got to create some sort of boundaries here. So, um, so these are groups of middle schoolers who go to school together. So it seems that their parents need to get coordinated. Yeah. To, to a large degree. Yeah. So they've got friends, they've created that. Um, because whenever I make like, so in Fortnite, right. So the goal of the game is, and it's really good to understand the goal of the game, right? If you want to get down into the, the level of why they're doing it, understand what's triggering them and what the point of the game is. So the point of the game with Fortnite, you have a hundred different players throughout the whole world. Possibly you can invite your friends and you drop into a world and it's the last person to survive wins, right? So it's, and you can kind of see how society has trended this way, you know, with anyway, zombies and that kind of thing. You're, you're trying to fend off the world and you're trying to be the one, you know, yeah. and so we, we as a society have kind of curated, we've, we've made this uh, a thing, but anyway, um, but, but what would be best is, yeah, get those parents coordinated together and say, Hey, we know they like to have these parties. Um, we need to kind of not, not, we need to break it up, but there needs to come to a point where parents need to come together and create those definitions for their own homes and then set their own guidelines of what they would like to do. But then definitely a hundred percent, you have to involve the youth within the solution. Um, say, well, what do you think that we should do? You know, well, there's nothing wrong here. Well, you're not really connecting. Well, that's the next generation. You know, that's the new way of communicating. Okay. <laughs> Let me, you know, when you're in a job interview, you're actually talking with somebody face to face. So <laughs> you're, these are skills that you're, you're definitely going to need. And again, I'm not trying to vilify video games too much there. There are some good things, but they've done a really good job at meshing um, good stuff with the bad stuff in order to make it okay stuff. And that's not, I'm not going to try to raise an okay child, right? <laughs> I want to, there's a good, better, best. And if I can get good out of them when they were okay, then success, right? So. So would you recommend like if they're this group of middle schoolers are all playing together, let's say that's my, my son. Mm -hmm. and I feel like it's just too much. Do you think it's, so do I just try to scale it back a little and I still allow it because I don't want to be like the complete, you know, never giving anything or if I see it's a real problem, I mean, what? This, yeah, I've thought about this particular scenario, not exactly Fortnite, but you know, you've got, you've got friends, you've got a lot of things stacked up against you. Uh, how in depth is this individual within it? Um, that's almost, I mean, I, I'd, I'd almost like to set up a little 15 minute free phone call and I just want to understand your situation further, Kathy, to help, um, just help, help you individually because this is, you know, things get very specific, right. As far as how, how to possibly help this. And so it would take, it's going to take a little bit more time to understand the situation and, and kind of dive into it a little bit more. Obviously, I'm passionate enough to spend a Wednesday night after a week after my baby's born to get on here and to be so open with my whole life. I'm, I'm obviously more than happy to spend 15 minutes to help you walk through a few things that I think that I would help. So. Totally. Okay, so Kathy's saying that her kids are grown and she's trying to help parents. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're talking, I mean, obviously, middle schoolers. Um, I mean, that's a, uh, you've got to kind of create a, an atmosphere where it's not going to be a negative thing. It's not like you're complaining about the games. You're all about a solution. You're all about, you know, let's, let's figure out why this game in particular is so important to um, our kids right now, not to society, but just why do they feel like they, um, you know, it's a, it's, a it's a social thing where people are able to say, hey, I've had five first place in this last week. It's, it's a badge of honor. It really is. Like, this is the equivalent of, of getting a really good grade in an in a Ivy League school, I swear. It's like people, you're, you're showing off that you have earned the right in order to be number one. 
and it's getting more and more difficult and the 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 ability that it takes for someone to get first place these days within Fortnite is getting higher and higher because people are getting better and better and so it's becoming more of a reward system and and so you have to realize that these kids are getting this massive dopamine kick as they're as they're winning this as they're increasing and improving and wanting to learn strategies and and sharing thoughts and ideas because this game is continuing to expand. And so I don't mean to talk strictly about Fortnite, but this is one game that there are tons of resources that are being pumped into this thing to keep these kids continually involved in it because it is a major moneymaker for this company that is actually pretty, a fairly young company and they've just found the, the great, the, the secret way of making it work. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and they're going to find a different game. If you pull away from them, if you pull this whole Fortnite thing out from underneath them, they're going to find some other uh, other way of doing it. And so, so yeah, I would definitely create a, a positive space where parents can come together, maybe a Facebook group or that's a little too, that's a little too indirect. Um, but maybe at least one or two of the parents, you kind of come together and say, you know, why do you think this is so important to your child or, you know, to our kids? Yeah. And have a very frank conversation and that will hopefully op open some dialogue to creating a solution together and then having a family council, then potentially bringing that down to their kids whenever they feel comfortable enough within that, uh, you know, so that would be, I'm trying to, try, trying to find some advice in a very specific thing. And I think that might help. So I think that's a good idea. One idea I had would be just, I know that because I, we told our oldest we didn't want her to have social media yet. I try a lot harder now to say yes to face, to just having friends over and getting together with friends. Like I don't say no to that a lot now because I would prefer that she's with people talking face to face than being on social media. So I think how that applies to this would just be maybe this group of parents can't all band together. I mean, if, if they all feel like it is potentially a problem, just organizing a group activity for these boys to go do something together, you know, have a family barbecue, invite all the families over and provide some activity, yeah. you know? And I love that. That'd be incredible. And then I think the other benefit of that not only is to get the boys out playing flag football or, or whatever. I mean, these boys that are playing Fortnite might not be into football and that's why they're playing Fortnite, but, um, the other benefit would be to build those relationships with those parents, because I think it's really helpful when you have to talk through these hard things with other parents to have that relationship. So awesome. Yeah. yeah that's a great idea. Wonderful. All right. Do we have Good. any other questions? I know we've taken a lot of everyone's time. So grateful for everyone being here, but I don't want to end if there's someone that is dying to ask a question. Anybody else, you can raise your hand or just throw it into the chat. Right. One, more, one more thing, it's just yeah. that um, Albert Einstein, he said uh, that, you know, we, we can't be at the same level of thinking of when the problem started, right? So as this, as this continues to develop and evolve, we're going to continually need solutions. And so I, as much as I'd love to say that this is, this is going to be static, you know, this is going to be like, because I used to think it was just consoles and you needed a TV in order to play games. Well, now we've got into the phones and, and from phones, I think we're really getting into VR. Yeah. And just this last week, you know, VR is where you put on goggles and you really feel like you're somewhere else. This creates a paradigm for people to completely lose a sense of responsibility and reality here. And um, just this last week, uh, wireless VR was made available through Oculus Rift, who is actually owned by Facebook. It's not necessary to know, but um, I've followed this a lot because I found this very intriguing. So things will continue to develop and evolve. And we've got to find ways to have kids check into themselves um, because it's really easy to check out of life. Yes, definitely. Awesome. 
Well, Spencer, thank you so much for your time. I, I know we talked about possibly postponing this because your baby came early. I'm so grateful that I know you made a sacrifice to be here. And, you know, we didn't have a lot right here live on the call, but uh, my experience has shown that people love videos. And I know hundreds of, this is going to reach hundreds of parents, really, and it will help so many people. I'm just so grateful to you for sharing your story with us. Well, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate you. You kind of coaxing me to make this leap to, to share my story and to help, help others. Cause I know that, uh, this is the same thing that uh, a lot of people are experiencing. And I hope some of these answers will have, um, kind of reached into your, your heart and your mind and that you'll be able to write down maybe two or three things that you'll discuss with your spouse um, because this, this is definitely something that we need to be re revisit, um, at, at a future time. And as things evolve, we'll, we'll just keep, keep trucking along and we'll keep making improvements to how we best, uh, can help them too. So good stuff. Yeah. I have a feeling this is just the beginning. I know parents are going to want to hear more from you. So oh, I, 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 so helpful. So yeah. Thanks. Well, great. Awesome. Okay, we'll sign off and good night, everybody. Thank you for being here. Yep. Thanks so much. Have a good one. <laughs>